I'm John Dykus. I thought I'd show you how easily the Icy Dock 4 Bay SSD rack goes into my Be Quiet computer case. I'll also be installing an Icy Dock hard disk drive bay that can enable hot swap for 3.5 inch hard drives. So here we have the Icy Dock Express Cage 4 Bay setup. It allows me to set four 2.5 inch SSDs into one 5.25 inch drive bay where you might usually stick a CD player. This has a fan that pulls from the front of the computer and expels toward the back. The fan also has settings that enables it to be set to 100% power or 60% or just when it's getting hot. This is supposed to keep the SSDs under 30 degrees Celsius as much as possible. So we remove the items from the package. It's well packed. It has a nice instruction manual, which I might give a glance over. You get two small bags with screws to attach a unit to the bracket and to attach the SSDs to the internal trays, should you so desire. There are instructions in many languages. You can freeze it here to take a closer look if you like. Now here's the fun part. Holding the darn thing in our hands, feeling the weight and strong build of the unit. It's strong. It has well cut louvers, it has spots for airflow, you got the tapped holes to attach it to the bracket. And at the back we have a fan and four ports for the SATA data connections. They're numbered from four to one left to right. There is a single power connection that will power all four, saving a lot of cable clutter. The easy logical layout of ports makes keeping clutter down easy. The fan pulls air from the front, but still from within the case, and it draws it through and out the back. The fan speed can be controlled by inserting this jumper. It's set to 60%, which is a metal setting. The left setting is 100% fan speed. The far right gives us a setting that will turn the fan on when the temperatures hit 30 degrees Celsius, so I'll set it to that setting for now. Turns out the fan is very quiet, and it tries to keep the SSDs below 30. Here's how the trays come out to load the SSD in. You pull or push a tab at the front, doorway opens, tray will then slide out. Of course, as expected, it's solid built, nothing cheap, which is good as it's not a cheap price for this unit. But you get a product that will likely last as long as the drives you put into it, maybe longer. The SSDs settle right on these little tabs here, the tabs right up where screws would normally go. If you want them a little bit extra secure, you can attach two screws at the other end. So now we take the sides and top off to access the drive bays. If you have some on hand, I think it's never a bad idea to spray some canned air on. It's really a kind of refrigerant. I like to knock the dust off any time I have this case open. Don't shake the can or some of the liquid refrigerant could come out. I've heard tell it can cause some damage if you really overdo it. The top and front panels have to come off to access the screws for the drive bays. Note the existing drive bay rack at the upper right. It is also from Icy Dock, but each drive needs its own power cable, so this new installation will reduce the cable clutter substantially. To remove the front panel, the lower filter must be removed first. Here's some file footage I took from a good angle of this process. You can see how the two bottom fans have brought up a lot of air and the filter has trapped a good amount of dust. You can even see that the fan toward the back is smaller than the one toward the front. Now we remove the front panel. Just press the tab starting from the top working your way down. Do one side and then the other. Don't yank or rip anything out. Be subtle with computers. First job now is to remove the existing hard drive. So, I have to remove a SATA power cable from each one, and man, are they wedged in tight there. I'll be able to reduce down to one power connection for four drives. You can see the SATA data cables. I have five of them all nicely bunched up, and in that little cable run there, the one power cable is running up over them. So, here's the box. It has to be installed into a bracket that fits into the case. Your case must, of course fit the five and a quarter inch form factor and have its own bracket. But first, let's put some drives in this box. You push the slide over, open the door, pull out the tray, set an SSD onto it, settle it over the little tabs, then you slide the tray into its spot, close the door, and voila. I promise, I didn't practice this beforehand, so that way you'd get to see how easily a rank amateur can do this. 
I've got to remove the control panel at the top of the case to get some screws to install the bracket. I also have a little bracket at the front that holds fans that I've already removed. This will open the slot for the drive bays. Once the top is off, I can remove the coffee can plastic lids top panel air block I made to keep air from being pushed back into the case with two fans out. I'm going to replace the coffee can lids with a professionally designed template and a custom made plastic air shield. I'm also going to change the lights around so they show through holes where the 140mm fans would be pulling air. Here's how the template is produced. And here I remove the front fan frame. At the top I have a piece of carbonated beverage cardboard packing material as a template to ensure it will all fit. The plastic will go under this to give a nice reflection underneath. The bracket that the drives will go into is being fit checked. The drive box is built to slide right in. The screw holes line up perfectly. The supplied screws work just great, but somehow that bit of video never got made. It's like I didn't tap the record button on the phone or something. So you slide this unit in, attach the bracket to the frame with the proper screws. With this case, and it's kind of similar with many, it's like four screws in the front and two at the top. Plug in the SATA data and power cables, and then you've got the hardware part done. Now we look at the Icy Dock Turbo Swap hard drive mobile rack. It's metal, it's got keys, it's awesome. It has a fan control knob, an on off switch, fan connectors so you can remove or swap out the fan if you wish. It has an anti vibration system that reduces vibration. It's trayless, so you just slide drives in and out while the system's running. You just turn the hard drive off and let it spin down before sliding it out. Here's how it's packaged. As usual with Icy Dock, I expect actually nothing but the best. And the package gives us an indication it'll be good stuff. Yep, good bubble wrapped cushion shipping. Some foam also. And here we see the bottom of the unit. Turn it right side up and we have instructions and a pack of screws and keys. Holding it like all their products, Icy Dock is made of chassis that is metal and feels stout and rigid. It has a single SATA power port at the back and a SATA data port. Here we see how the front looks. The locks mostly prevent a curious onlooker from unlatching the drive while it's running. A half serious thief can pick this with a paper clip. You can see how the arm swings and pushes the hard drive into its slot at the right angle. Here's a close up of the directions if you want to freeze it and study. Hmm, I wonder if I could add a 120mm Be Quiet fan. But just to let you know, it's too thick to work. But if you were to try, here's how you'd go about it. You unscrew the chassis from the side brackets, making sure you keep an eye on where the rubber grommet things go. It takes a bit to keep it all in line in the right way, so I recommend you not bother. If you want to just do away with the fan as I did, it's easy enough. Just unscrew it from the top, but leave the idea of installing a bigger fan behind unless you've got a super, super thin one. This Rosewell seems like it'd be just a bit thick. I decided I'd just go without a fan since I've never had a fan attached to a hard drive before. Why bother now? Now, here we see the manufacturer of the plastic air block. The idea is that since I've taken two fans out of the top, I might be getting a lot of air sucked out by two top exhaust fans, and much of it will just get pushed back into the top again. Why recirculate the same air? I'm blocking it off. Okay, we're back at the cable side again. I push the cables out of the case so I can gain control. I'll pull them out carefully. I intended to run them to the roof and then through holes in the plastic at the top and drop down and be really awesome looking, but there was not enough length for that. These are two foot cables. I must need like two and a half or three footers. And the new unit will slip into this hole, except of course we have to put the screws into this side to hold it in place. And for most computer cases, you have to remove the top and front and take the bracket out to attach it, which I did. But you can see that process on the first part of this video. So then I hooked all five SATA data cables. Since I'd marked them, I could feed them through, keeping things neat and tidy. This is the manner in which you attach the four screws on each side, but like me, you might have to remove the whole bracket. Here's what I got with everything plugged in, but the panel's not yet attached. You can see it's just a cardboard at the top showing through a clear plastic. Here's what it looks like with the side panels on, the RGB lights on. Oh, it looks pretty good. 
Here's the front panel open, the four bay SSD at the top and right under it the hard drive bay. When the drives are in use, the lights blink. Being on shows there's an active drive in there. Overall, it was a very successful addition to a computer. I can add an SSD easily by just plugging in. No more taking the sides off and unplugging and plugging things. Just one power cable for four drives. A hard disk hot swap means I can turn the hard drive off to keep it from spinning up. I only use hard disk for backup storage anyway. I see Doc makes good stuff. You shouldn't be too concerned about the price. Their materials will last for decades. It's good stuff. Gives you a lot of value for the money.